Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode here at A Week in Geekdom, and today we're going to be reviewing Spirit Circle. That's right, everybody. Welcome back to another installment. Today we're talking Spirit Circle by Satoshi Mizukami, and here I have with me all six volumes looking pretty spectacular. I love the spines on these books, and they're really awesome. They are smaller than your regular sized manga. For example, here we have a volume of Black Clover, and as you can see, they're just a tad smaller than your manga. So you're probably wondering, what the heck is Spirit Circle about? Well, I am here to inform you that this series is actually quite good, quite awesome. There, I saved you all the trouble. Spirit Circle is the story about Futa Okeya. He is this high schooler, which you can see right here. He can see dead people's spirits and all that stuff. And one particular day in high school, he meets the character of Koko Ishigami, which you can see right there, and he falls for her when she when he tries to talk to her however she finds out that he is hiding this uh, birthmark and immediately denounces him as her rival and her mortal enemy so what soon follows is these characters finding out that they are reincarnated versions of themselves they have lived previously seven lives and this feud has been going around for what seems like an eternity so the characters are really fascinating because uh, through the concept of reincarnation, you get to explore different aspects of them, especially Futa with his different uh, past lives. There's a character called Fortuna, which is, uh, he serves as the main antagonist of the story, and it is the first incarnation of the character from a very long time ago. This uh, character did something in the story which set everything in motion, for uh, Ishigami to have this feud with him across all eras. And as you progress through the story, you find out why that is. I'm not necessarily going to spoil that here because that is the whole point of the story. But when you start reading this book, at first it starts off as this uh, comedy, action comedy, if you will, with these two characters linked in a heated battle, as you can see right here in the opening pages and wonderful uh, colored illustrations. Uh, but as you soon find out, there's a lot more to that. The character of East, which you can see here on the cover of Volume 2, and the character of Rune, which you can see in Volume 1. These, ca these uh, characters play a crucial part to the story. And basically, these four characters have been around for a very long uh, time. And with the concept of reincarnation for a character like Futa, you get to explore different aspects. Like I mentioned earlier, you see characters uh, like Fortuna, Fone, uh, Van, Flores, Fuko, uh, Lafell, I think that was the name, I'm probably butchering it, and Hotaru. Uh, different versions in different eras, like one of them, like uh, Hotaru will be in feudal Japan, another will be in the future or in the past, because the book establishes or the author establishes the concept of like this time stream of souls, which is like this cosmic river. It's get, it gets kind of trippy, this cosmic river and souls aren't necessarily bound to them like uh, time is where time goes forward. Uh, a soul or a spirit residing in this uh, grand river, they can move to either side. So while the character that you're reading about, uh, Futa Okea, you think he is in the present, which he is, a reincarnated life can be from far into the future, from far into the future, or far into the past. So Okea can be a reincarnated past self to a future version of himself. I know, it's a, it's a little bit weird, and uh, Satoshi, when he writes his book, at certain points, he does get a little bit too technical with the terminology and talking about uh, spirits and how to uh, acquire them 
and the process or, or how the universe is supposed to work and different planes of existence, the concept of parallel dimensions gets explored and then thrown around. It can be a little bit confusing if you're new to the whole sci-fi uh, manga realm, but overall a fantastic story with very heartwarming beautifully drawn and written characters. These are living, breathing uh, people that have gone through so much without them realizing it. I love the idea that you get to explore different aspects of Futa because uh, like a trait that our main character might be missing, you might see that in a previous life and it carries over. And it forms sort of like this chain where the character is constantly evolving and progressing without you noticing it. I thought that was pretty smart, pretty awesome. Same with Ishigami. She is a wonderful character and the reason for that you to begin you're like man why is she so hell-bent on killing uh futa but when you do find out it's a wild ride like i fell in love with this title it plays a lot with the concept of nostalgia and if you've ever had like dreams before where you see yourself in a different time or a different life and sort of the notions for example that, that that you get when you dream something very vividly and then you wake up and and you can't remember what it was and it sticks with you and sometimes it affects you emotionally i thought that was one of the greatest things about spirit circle and some of the stories especially um uh floors which was in ancient egypt that was i think that was my favorite out of out of everything because you know it, it teaches you stuff it teaches you to uh, treasure friendship and, and loved ones and to not take them for granted and to live out your life as best as you can because you only get one shot at it and you don't want any regrets and you see these characters that for whatever reason they were lacking something and they I don't want to say pay the price in a negative way but like at the end they were sad because they couldn't fulfill everything that they wanted and that is a universal problem that we as a human species can go through right when we uh when we take a look at how short life can be and what we could be doing or what we haven't done it can affect you emotionally and psychologically and i think this the manga explores that in a very unique way I love the idea that a protagonist can also be the antagonist and even though there's this massive world building, the story's actually pretty self-contained. Aside from a few characters, I'm going to say like eight or nine of them, you don't really see a lot of characters in this story. But it definitely feels heavy, especially with uh, Futa acquiring what is the spirit circle itself, this uh, hula hoop looking thing which can entrap uh, circles out of the river that I mentioned earlier or out of the stream or, or whatever and allows him to view his previous lives in a dream and we and when he wakes up he still has like uh, like he lived through that life so he still have characteristics from previous selves so I thought that was pretty interesting um, and you know uh, it, it helps the character evolve and by the end of the story it's it's full circle you know uh there are a ton of sci-fi concepts concepts involved from time travel to ghosts and parallel dimensions and aliens and gods and uh just a, a whole assortment of craziness that happens but the author satoshi is able to round everything up and provide us a very solid conclusion to this story. I do think, in my honest opinion, I do think that the story does stick the landing and you get a very satisfying conclusion, a very heartfelt, honest conclusion to a story about fate, love, and uh, interwoven fates, I should say, and star-crossed lovers, and the whole concept of past lives, all that stuff. I think he really did a good job of tying everything together in a very satisfying way. Every character gets explored, they get decompressed, you get to learn about their stuff, and I wish at the end we could have gotten a little bit more, maybe like a prolonged epilogue with the series far into the future, I guess, with uh, the characters and all that stuff, but what we got was pretty solid, 
I loved it, and uh, just a fantastic ride overall. Uh, one of the aspects that most intrigued me about it, and it's very silly because obviously when it's a manga or a comic or whatever, art is such an important part of the experience, and the art in Spirit Circle is pretty fantastic, I gotta say. You know, when you can go from a little bit silly and cartoonish to beautiful scenes of characters just walking with very minimal backgrounds, I gotta say, that threw me for a loop. Uh, I was expecting a more detailed background, but it doesn't really need it because the standout of the story, like I said, it's very self-contained, are the characters themselves. And, I mean, just this is actually one of my favorite uh, pieces, this right here, and it's not even part of the actual story. You do get some colored pages at the beginning of each volume, which was nice. But, like, yeah, you do get some backgrounds, but for the most part, it's very empty. Uh, a lot of white space, which uh, you think might be a determinant to the series, but it actually... You know, it uh, reinforces the strength of the characters and the way they look and behave. It can look very anime-ish, if that's a thing, but it works. When you read it, you fall in love. It's very charming, a very beautifully drawn series with very rich detail. Like, the present stuff, you will see a lot of white backgrounds, but when you do go to the past lives, you will see detail like this. This is a... Uh, um, uh, van with the medieval setting and all that stuff. Really awesome stuff that I think is going to be worthwhile if you do decide to uh, pick it up. It's out of context, so you don't know why, what is happening in these images, but if you've read the story, you probably know. But when there are action scenes, it is very fluid and dynamic and really awesome to look at. Here is more of that spirit circle action with the past lives and stuff. Just really heartwarming story in my honest opinion. There is a critique in this series when it comes to the human species, how we, you know, the dangers of a society that uh, wants to prolong life as long as possible, and I think Satoshi does a good job of reminding us that, you know, life is finite. There is a purpose to what we're doing, and upsetting the balance and, and doing the things that these characters are doing can be a little bit sacrilegious to the way life is meant to be lived, if you catch my drift, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. There are a couple scenes where I'm still trying to figure out. I don't know what the heck was going on with uh, the whole uh, future stuff with the aliens and stuff. Uh, tiny little spoiler there. Uh, I still don't understand everything 100%, but it's still awesome and worth a reread to uh, get a new perspective. This is actually one of my favorite panels of the whole series. This is a good uh, moment in the series where you can sort of understand the comedic tone and how awesome these characters look. It can go from something like this to more uh, trippy to more trippy stuff like that, and more uh, dramatic elements. So yeah, fantastic, heartwarming characters, a really interesting take on the whole concept of reincarnation, fantastic writing, heartwarming series that really does stick the landing, fantastic artwork that is very expressive, can be a little bit minimal, but when it wants to, it ups the ante and gives you fully detailed backgrounds and just uh, full, uh, uh, people, you know, looking pretty freaking fantastic on page. Just a wonderful overall experience that I do recommend. If you want to read something different, if you want to read something a little bit more dramatic, filled with sci-fi, uh, heart, romance, comedy, and action, Spirit Circle might be it for you. Have you read Spirit Circle? What did you think of the ending? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm very interested in your opinion on the whole ending and the concept of the uh, reincarnation and the seven lives and all that stuff. Guys, as always, thank you so much uh, for liking, commenting, and subscribing to A Week in Geekdom. It's, it's a privilege that I get to do videos and talk uh, nerd talk with you guys, whether it's books, anime, whatever it may be. <laughs> thank you once again. You can follow me on your favorite social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. You know what to do. Thank you once again. I will catch all of you on our next video.